So welcome back. Nana here, then we are beginning the session as such now. Fine. Good. Good, Surya. Fine. You will now get good response. Now, fine. See. Uh, okay. We are now beginning the session. Now, fine. So we are now going to. We are now into the receiving. Now, fine. We go ahead and then I do it. Now. So let me go on the share my screen now. So from there, and then let me start the session. Actually. Well, uh, now what happens? Uh, we will now go to uh, the thing. Fine. Now we have seen what an automatic creation uh, through. Uh, the uh, what happens as a result now. Now we are going to go for the other one now. Fine, go to the procurement now, and then I will not go to the suppliers now. Fine, go to the procurement and then go to the suppliers. Fine. <clears throat> Saroj, you will be finding it uh, slightly bit difficult now. Fine, just follow it up, and then afterwards, what happens after uh, next week? You will be on par with us now. Fine. Uh, Saroj is uh, joined just now. Fine, he is from Infosys, and then he is an expert on auto EBS now. Fine. So he is now learning fusion. So uh, you jumping in now. What happens will be very difficult for you to understand, but uh, gradually you will understand it. Okay. Fine. Sir, 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 sir. Yep. I will not go to the managed suppliers. No, fine. Click on the managed suppliers, and then I will not query my supplier over here now. So it's a B zero one is the one. Fine. Click on search, <clears throat> and then here, automatically go there. Open up our supplier. Fine. Then click on the B zero one sub one. I am now opening it up. <clears throat> so go there, and then go to the sites now. Fine. Click on the sites, and then here go there. Select it, and then click on edit now. I'm going to edit. So click on the edit, and then right hand side top now. <clears throat> I'm going to edit it now. So once you edit, what happens? You again go there and then you click on it now. <clears throat> so click on the edit button. Fine. Once when you click on the edit button on the top, what happens again? It is coming as a edit. Fine. Click on the edit again inside. Go, go down and then you go to the purchasing now. Fine. So many companies do not create the invoice based upon the receipt actually. So they make what happens? The invoice somewhere level is not receipt. It is basically packing slip. So the packing slip is a is a famous mechanism by which what happens? They will be creating an auto invoice actually. Fine. This is how. Many companies work upon right? make now invoice invoice summary level is packing slip. Now. So we are going to see what, how it's working now. So invoice summary level is packing slip. Fine, go there. So the packing slip will now form part of the invoice number actually. So we have already given Tata as a prefix, and then what happens? The GR number is coming. The GR number will be substituted by packing slip, so that they can very easily track against for which packing slip they have paid actually. Thank you. Consider close now. They know that. So click on it and then click on submit again. Whenever you have a submit button, have the habit of submitting it because whatever sometimes if you don't submit it, it will not work at all. Uh, I'm getting some. Uh... Okay, good. So it's not done. Fine. Click on done. <clears throat> so it's not done. So now the supplier is not done. Will now go on then create what happens one more purchase order on this one. And then click on it. So now go to the home icon and then you go to the procurement and then clear purchase order. Click on it. So go to the procurement and then I go to the purchase orders now. And this time what happens? The packing slip will be forming part of his uh, uh, invoice number now. And go there. Click on it. I will not go there. And then I will not and go to what? I will not create an order and then show it. I will create order. <clears throat> and then the procurement we use this one and then we go there. And then the supplier is B zero one. <clears throat> So sub one now. And then go there. And then click on create now. Go down. So click on plus now. Zero one uh, one zero. I will not put here. Some item. I'm going to put it. I'm going to put here. And you can see the pay on receipt is not coming. So whatever you have made as a pay on receipt of the supplier. For the particular order, I don't want to honor him with the automatic payment, so I can even remove it also. And that gets defaulted over here. We can very well remove the defaults, whatever is coming over there. Go there. So it's now completed. Go there. Go to the schedules and then and give a date. Now find the promised date or the requested delivery date or the promised date. One of them is a mandatory one. Find go there. Click on it. And then it. I want it today itself. Go there. And then after having done this, what happens? You have the habit of what happens? Giving a save and then and give a validate also. So validate is available only on a purchase order and not on the requisition of an actions validate. You can very well validate. Very well, okay. Two zero two zero is now getting ready. And then here, what happens? You go there. No errors. Someone is fine. Click on submit. So this gets done. 
So it is now submitted now. Okay. <laughs> now go on the, open up one more tab again. Let me come on. Duplicate it now. So click on it and then enter now. So click on the URL and enter. So you duplicated it. Now we'll now go to the what supply chain execution. We'll now go to the supply chain execution and then you go to the inventory management and then I'm going to make a result now. 2020, I'm going to make a result now. So click on it. And then yeah, you go there. <clears throat> and then you go to what results. And then you go to the receive expected shipments and then in which what happens, I'm going to query on the 2020. Purchase order number is 2020 and then give a tab now and go there. So it's not it compliant. You have to wait for it till it gets approved actually. So click on search. Select it. And then here, what happens? You go on and keep on receiving. So upon gate receipt itself, what happens? It becomes eligible for a payment actually. There is no need for it even deliver actually. And to control this is quantity, it will not show you fine. I will not receive only 24 quantities on this. I will not put the sub inventory in the receiving section is there, so sub inventory is not possible. If the delivery is going to be inventory, then whatever sub inventory is very much possible. Upon gate receipt, the consignment becomes eligible for a payment actually. And click on gate receipt. So now many companies, what they do is upon click on gate receipt, they will not put the packing slip number. So go there, I will not say pack. One, two, three. So this becomes a reference for the invoice actually. So once when you give the packing slip number over here, now fine, this becomes the reference name voice. And then they, when they see all the invoices against which, which packing slip, they have made a payment actually. Fine. This is a very common scenario in many companies actually. Fine. So summary level is not zip, but packing slip remember, on the supplier area. And go there, click on submit now fine, in doubts on this now. <clears throat> so this is how many companies operate as far as auto invoice is concerned. They give only packing slip now. If packing slip is missing, then the GRN number will be there. What happens? It will form part of the Click on subject. If the packing slip is missing, then the GRN number 2011 will be forming part of the uh, your uh, invoice number. Actually, click on okay. Now, 2011 is not done. Fine. The receipt is not done. Okay. Not done. So, it's not done. Fine. Go there. It will now run the send auto invoice. Now. Fine. I don't know how to automate it now. Fine. If anybody knows about how to automate the send uh, pay on receipt now, fine. You please tell me. I want to learn it actually. I talked to my financial guys. They are also saying, Arya, this is a, 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 a supply chain job. You don't know about. You only have to automate and then give it to us. That's what I said. <coughs> but uh, uh, I, nobody is giving, helping me on this now. <coughs> uh, monitor process is not there. Come on, yeah. It has gone down too much, I think, probably. And go there, click on it, and then go to the tools, <coughs> and then you'll not do it. Oh, God. It has gone to the social, actually. And something I've clicked on it. So, let me click on the home icon. <coughs> And then come back and then click on the tools and then I go to the what's called the scheduled process now. Fine, click on the scheduled process. So yeah, I'm going to click on the scheduling process. So send the pay on result. Fine. Send the percentage. Pay percentage and then give a tab now. And then click on search now. Okay. 2011 is my GRN number. Fine, go there. Click on it and then click on OK now. And I'm going to I'm going to pass on the parameter of a GRN number for Pushing it into payables now. Fine. The transaction sources evaluated as a settlement. I'm yet to learn the ASBN and ASN. Fine. I'm, uh, I'm not yet done. So once when I learn the supplier portal, I think probably I'll be conducting the training on this. Fine. I have to learn a lot of modules like what happens at the uh, self service procurement, uh, the sourcing procurement contracts, supplier qualification, and all. Fine. There are some five pillars of that. So as and when I learn it, I will again almost because I'm not getting the mood to sit and then learn actually. Click on it. And then the commitment role, and then the aging period is now getting defaulted in the profile now. Fine, I'm not changing it to zero. Only when you change it to zero, what happens? It will not immediately create. Otherwise, what happens? It will allow the invoice to age for three days, and then at first only it will now create now. Fine, that the number is two zero one one, and then you tab now. This time you can see the invoice is now getting created with the pack number. Fine, click on submit now. Click on okay. The invoice is becoming with the pack number now. Send pay on it will automatically trigger the auto invoice now. <coughs> So this pushes the data into the interface tables and then what happens the import order in payables invoice automatically triggers and then go it now. But in reality, what happens, this has to run upon receipt now. The send pay on receipt has to run upon receipt. I don't know how to do this now. Anybody, uh, what happens, they play, make an R&D. Hey, Shafiq, uh, you are uh, very good in doing the R&D now. Right? Uh, when I make a receipt in the gate, what happens, this has to run automatically. I don't know how to do that. Now, right? Refer some documents here and there. He's an excellent guy actually. Right? He puts a lot of efforts and do it now. So it's not running, fine. Import payables, invoice, the report is only coming, fine. The invoice is already gone now, fine. Go to this place. And then, yeah, go there. I'm going to make one more type now. Click on duplicate. And then I will now go and then have a look at the invoice. So go to the payables now and click on the payables. 
and then here what happens they go to the tables invoices not fine with that yes. and if we have given the receipt number how it will club the packing slip number wise invoice yeah see i have given the receipt number of 2011 but while receiving it i have given the packing slip number so what happens it will not pick up the packing slip number only if the packing slip number is absent then what happens it will not show you uh, what happens you have to see you have the uh, this thing also the three invoices are there fine click on it reason invoices are not showing as three fine here also all otherwise what about manage invoices and then can query fine one of the methods you can query now go there supply body if we have three receipts of same packing slip number then it will generate one no, invoice for uh, yeah uh, if you have a same packing slip number multiple i don't know how it will be given fine but packing slip numbers are unique for every shipment what happens there will be a packing slip number. So that only I have to put it. Click on it. Click on OK now. So I will now give it to RKR now. Fine. She will now analyze and do it. Fine. Yeah, she, you know RKR. You know uh, financials, na? No? You can search now. Yeah, EBS financials. EBS financials. Yes. Now I you know. see, uh, I got the prefix as well as the packing number of this coming. Pack one two three is coming. Can you again repeat what exactly is your question now in this place? Because I'm unable to understand your question actually. Fine. You can now see the Tata underscore Pack one two three underscore running number. Hey, this running number, how to control it? No, this is system generated number. We mm -hmm. cannot. We don't have any control, ah. Huh? Mm. Yeah. In EBS also, it's like this, na. Yes, 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 exactly. So what happens? No, I am not able to correlate the packing slip number. I mean, it is just to generate the, you know. Invoice. Uh, Actually, supplier has now supplied you something, fine, with the packing slip number. So, if you put the packing slip number on the invoice later on, you can even what happens? See which packing slip is paid, which is not paid. You can very well understand. Many a companies on the supply chain front, what happens? They follow only the packing slip for, number for the order invoice actually, or the order invoice. What happens? They prefer only this one. You go on and see in the many the many areas, and many of them will be using the packing slip number as a as a part of your invoice actually. Go to the actions now. Go to the actions and then click on what happens. Validate now. Click on validate. Do not validate. It will be getting validated by the way. So provided you give all the accounts over there. Valid. So RKR is saying that what happens? This number you don't have any control. Twenty five thousand thirty six. What happens? The system generated number you don't have any control. Do actions. <sighs> In a business suite, we have control on that one. What we want to give uh, Nana, mm -hmm. but for uh, fusion, we don't have control. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, fine. <laughs> He's saying this is all. So now what happens? I will now make one more receipt on this. Now fine, two zero one zero. Fine, we'll click on that now. I will now make one more receipt without the packing slip number. I can now see that what happens? The GR number will be coming. Fine, we'll click on the receipt expected shipment two zero one zero two zero two zero. No, no, one doubt I have just become. <clears throat> so if I create a PO with the pay on receipt is not checked. Yeah, that way. And if I have to push that into invoice payables, so yeah, we are going to see the same pay on receipt. What invoice? So I will now come to that once when they come. We will now have a look at it. So the next topic is what without uh, order invoice now fine you go there i will now say 15 quantities fine go there 15 quantities and then do it now fine go there click on, click on create this account this time what happens i am not uh, putting any packing slip number no no the grn number will be forming part of the invoice now click on something 2012 will be forming part of the and not the packing slip number. fine so that is where it is now fine go there click on it and then now go to the monitor process then we'll now do this now fine click on the uh, schedule new process send to pay fine click on it now fine 2012 is my number fine go there so my uh, number is uh, two zero one two is the one fine. Give it a time now. The aging period is what zero. And click on submit. This time, what am I? You'll now find two zero one two forming part of your invoice number. So this is on the automatic front actually from the procure to pay for fine. And remember, you will be having one uh, uh, one concurrent which will be running receiving transaction processor on every receipt actually. In EBS, what happens? They have used that concurrent to integrate with other applications, actually, like SAP or JD Edwards or whatever it is. They have they have done it. But in in fact, what happens? One of my students asked me, sir, the pay on is not running here. So uh, what happens? The receiving RTP is not running. So how to do the integration? So but when they raised the what happens? They started the Oracle. Oracle told about how to do it. There is a different way of doing it. But uh, he didn't responded back to me. I asked him, uh, "Sir, Kardia, uh, man, fine." <laughs> okay. Uh, in the indirectly he's saying that whatever you cannot understand is more, more of a technical actually. Go there. Go to this place and then click on that now. Fine. Go there. <clears throat> Can I see? Uh, the count will be increasing now. Fine. Not increasing actually. Fine. I will now click on the recent counts. We'll now see if the next one is coming. Fine. So two zero one two invoice has come here. Fine. For fifteen quantities. So previously, what happens is a pack one two three, and then now it's a two zero one two is the invoice. Fine, click on it now. And now it's not showing four four. The result is not showing four. So if you open it up again, you can see this one. Now. 
So go to invoice action so that whatever we could validate and we get more. <coughs> this is validated, fine. That's it from me as far as what happens. The P2P push is concerned now. <coughs> now we'll not see a manual invoice. Now if I'm going to click on it, I will not see a manual invoice. So we will now create one more purchase order over here. Fine. We'll not go for a, no automation actually. Fine. Will... Now, yesterday's test case of consignment inventory oh, was yeah, also. Yeah, 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 we will not do that. Fine, but it's a consignment, we will not do that. No, consignment, uh, the supplier is not fine. Click on that, we will not do the consignment. Of fine, because I will not see this. Uh, consign, fine, create the consumption advice, create percentage, cons percentage, fine, ADV percentage. So, create consumption advice. One yesterday's uh, topic is still missing. Fine, good, thanks. Uh, yeah, yeah, create consumption advice. Fine, click on okay. Now, fine. Click on okay. So supplier is what B01 cons2 actually. Fine, B01 and then cons2 is a supplier. So we're going to put the supplier over here. Cons2 is a supplier. Just click on okay. And then the supplier site is what? You drop it down there. Site 2. Site 2 now. Okay, fine. Good. Site 2. I forgot on the <laughs> I was about to put site 2 on actually. Fine. So display lot and serial numbers and then go by transaction type and then what I'm exactly consumption is report also. Fine, click on something. Now this time it has to create now, fine. Because the day has got closed now, fine. We have given a what happens we have period of one day actually. So this has to create an order invoice. Man. <clears throat> Import order invoice has to run now. Import payables invoice. Man. This has to run now. Let me see that it's running now. Create consumption days in the morning. Yes, it's running. Import payables invoice is running now. So consumption advice is created and then what happens is not running. But what happens in EBIS, we can even give zero play, zero days basically. But here zero is not working for me. I tried long time back, maybe uh, around uh, say <laughs> one year before I think I tried because I am not I am not connecting any training after that and, and purchasing actually. It's a very long time. So somebody analyze it for zero also because what happens? Some companies would like to have a payment immediately as soon as what happens? Uh, the consignment is not done. When you consume, what happens? You have to pay. But here, if I make as only one day, it's working. I don't know why it's so. And whether it's not done. And go there, go to this place, and then go to invoice, and then again, what happens? They click on it, fine. You will not see the consignment invoice. Click on it. Where is the consignment invoice? Oh, invoice oh the different supplier. Okay, that has to come here in the main one. Huh? It is not coming. So, recent ones, if you click on it now, fine. It has to show me the invoice now. Click on, click on, fine. Now, go on the Korean there. What happens? You go to the managing invoice, and then Korean the supplier actually. So, supplier is what? B01, and then cons2 is the one. So click on search on this now. It has to show me the invoice. So it has come now. Fine. The use invoice actually is the use invoice with the 28th July date now. Right? With the running number. And this also can be controlled actually. Fine. Uh, I don't know how to control it. You can even put the consignment number over here now. Fine. I don't know how to customize this. Now, fine. The use invoice has come now. Fine. For the for the for the for the so if you go to the lines area, you can now see this now. It's all. The distribution is now getting created automatically actually. The distribution is now getting created. So for 55 quantities which you have consumed, for which what happened, the invoice is not come. And remember, you cannot even manually create an invoice when you want to match it against this P1 actually. Fine. Is the, what is the P1 number? Some 20, uh, 2008 or something like that. When you try to match it, it will not even allow you to match at all because it is against consumption advice only. This is excellently done. It's all working, but one part is that what is not, a, I'm not able to do a zero date now, basically. I, I failed on the day. But when I made it one day, what happens, it worked now fine. I don't know what is wrong. So here, if you go there, go to the place and then have a look at this one fine. Go click on it. And then you go to the, what's called supply chain execution now, fine. Supply chain execution. And then you go to the inventory management. <clears throat> when I was working in Steel Authority, uh, way back in 1980s, at the time, there were no computers. And then we were having this consignment concept. And then uh, what happens, only on Friday, they will not make a payment. So whatever we consume for the whole week, what happens, we will not make a payment. We will not create a payment and then we will not create a, uh, what happens in noise. Everything is manual there. Right? There's no computers at all. Right? Through the registers, we used to do it. And then uh, uh, we, we, we honor the supplier with that, with that, with that uh, what happens, uh, with the payment actually. We will now give a, uh, we will now, we will now uh, summarize all the consumption advice on the register actually. And then we will now send a note to, uh, yeah, through internal doc, it will be sent to the payables department. And then the payables department will now have a look at it and then they will now make a payment. Because everyday processing is very difficult. And so what happens we summarize only on a weekend and then do it. This is a very old concept and then it is excellently working now. Fine, brother. So uh, you go there, go to this place, inventory, and then you go to the inventory and then have a look at the consumption advice now. Fine, brother. Click on it. 
So you know, when the, when the marriage consumption, aging is also that. upon aging only we can make a payment now. Fine, this is where it is controlled. I don't know how to do all these things now. Fine, review consumption advice exceptions. The review consumption advice are no good. Fine, put on the review consumption. It is again a big topic. Try to make a dig on it at a greater extent so that whatever they understand it. Really. You will have to come and uh, see on that. That's called my LE now. Fine, you will click on it. So my LE is B zero one. And again, we will not take the help of uh, uh, what happens ever. Uh, <clears throat> Anubhav, uh, when we are doing the sales consignment, actually, fine. If uh, if we can help it out, it's excellent, actually. And I was, I have seen it in the Saudi Arabia, but I couldn't understand the way in which they are passing. It. Fine, so very complex one. And then uh, since that was not my topic, and then I don't want to get into it, and then what I was, I get stuck on this. Now, fine, I simply escape and then came back. <laughs> so they wanted to optimize this. They, they were supplying to hospitals actually, and then uh, they have created a sub inventory in every hospital, and then uh, they will now dump their stocks over there. And then whenever the hospital consumes it, what happens? It creates a sales order for them. I don't know how the process is all. I mean, whether it is a manual or automatic, I have not seen it. But this is what they do. That they want to further optimize it, the consignment. Fine, but then, uh, I, I couldn't understand it actually. So you can now see the consignment advice is now coming. Fine. So the consumption advice number is also there. Fine. This much has been consumed. And then, but in the main area, it doesn't show at all. Fine. If you go to the 30th the transfer test, what happens? It doesn't know. In EBS, it clearly shows now. If you go there, click on the item manager, manager item column list, and then if you query for the item, it will not show you which is your stock and then which is their stock actually. Right. And then go to the transport test, the one for which one the consignment has been done. Now. So click on search now, fine. So it shows you this fine. Any, any other place where we can see which is our stock and then which is a supplier stock actually. It shows the entire stock here. If you go there and then if you keep your cursor on this now, fine. And then if you keep your cursor. <clears throat> in, the, in the consignment details, if you agree on the lot number, sometimes on the sub it is coming, sometimes on the lot it is coming now, and the consignment is not coming here at all. No, no, we did in B011. Oh, 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 the organization, okay, fine, change the organization. Fine. Okay, uh, that itself is not showing actually. Fine, if you see that, that itself is not showing. And let us not change the organization. Yeah, B011. So click on the manager and this. So if somebody uh, has got uh, what happens a good exposure of this domain, please educate all of us on the complete consignment activity assessment. We have a transfer to regular in EBS now, fine. And likewise, how to do the upon consumption, it has to go from that sub inventory to our sub inventory actually. B01. <clears throat> so B01, 30, and then give a tab. Transfer test, click on OK now. Click on search. It shows you this all. Expand it. it. Not the consignment details is coming, but it has to show us what is our on and now. Then we have now consumed 55, but 55 ah, is not showing the total stock of uh, what happens. The supplier put together, supplier and our stock put together is 120. 55 is ours actually, and they're not showing that. Good then. So that is the completion of the uh, what happens. Uh, your consignment uh, sub inventory. I have introduced you to consignment sub inventory. Fine. Go further than if you make any uh, new things. What happens? Uh, teach us what how to do it. Uh, one thing is what zero date is not working for me. You try if it is working, it's great because uh, that may be a bug. Uh, long time back it was. I was testing on the release eleven only. Towards I never tested it. So maybe what happens? Uh, that bug might have been fixed. Actually, I'm not sure about. It. And now the next topic is what we are now going to make a manual PO where what happens uh, there is no automation at all. And we'll click on that. And then make a manual PO and then wait. You go to the purchase procurement and then you go to the purchase orders and then we're going to make a manual PO. Go there. Click on it. 2020. I'm going to make a query fine. Go to the manager orders and then query 200. And then let me copy it now. And go to 2020 and then tap and then click on search now. And then let me make a duplicate now. And go to actions, select it and then go to actions and then duplicate it as a repeat purchase order. I'm not repeating it actually. I'm not repeating it. So here, what happens? I go there. First of all, I remove the pay on the zip now. If it is removed, what happens? It will not be automatic as such now. It's all totally manual. Actually. And I go to the schedules now. Fine. We will now begin with the two APU. Fine. Click on the two APU. Click on it. Schedules and then click on edit now. I'm going to begin on the manual PO with the two APU. So you go there. It's an order and then two way. Fine. They are all getting defaulted from the uh, configure procurement business function or from the supplier. Fine. Uh, the defaulting always have a look at it now. Fine. There's an excellent document now. Fine. Given by one of my students actually. So if you go there, one defaulting I have given you. Fine. Go to the uh, fusion procurement documentation now. Fine. Starting in default or something like that. Uh, purchasing defaulting or defaulting can peep. I'm not put it in here. Purchasing defaulting is a beautiful document. It will tell you from bare and all it defaults actually. I don't know where. What is the document name? I have forgotten. Anybody remembers the document name? 
PO headers schedules distributions defaulting. This is an excellent document now. PO header schedule distribution defaulting. PO header schedule distribution defaulting on your procurement documentation. If I go there. So if you go on and have a look at it now, it explains you each and every field. Right? So it has got three uh, things, one for the purchase order, one for the BPA, and then one for the CPA. Fine. Automatically generated orders will be depending, defaulting only from this place. Uh, and then every field has been written from where it now. So it will now go from the built location, it will not take up from the supply side. If it is absent, it will now go to the common payables and procurement options. And similarly for the buyer, what happens for the normal one, it is not taking up from the, the logged user will be a buyer actually. For the carrier, the supply side, if it is not available, it will now go and then default. Beautiful document. The, one of my students has given this now. Fine. So use this for understanding about how the defaulting happens in your PO basically. And each and every field has been explained over here now. And there will be and there a lot of information over there. <coughs> Excellent now. So this will be a very handy one. So that what happens, you can understand from where it is defaulting. Close it now. Fine. It's a PO header distribution defaulting now. The PO header schedules distribution defaulting. <coughs> Likewise, if you have any good documents, also please share it to me. I will now share it to others actually. Fine. So that my kitty also will now become healthy actually. Fine. It will now become more uh, informative. As such now for this. So now here, what happens? I am now making a, a two-way PO basically. This means what? Uh, we use this in Ispath Industries Bombay only for advance payment. So there is a strict instruction that what happens is no advance invoice should be proper process at all. No prepayment invoice at all. So if you want to make a prepayment invoice, what happens is create a PO with a two-way PO. That is what the instruction from the audit actually because so many mall practices were happening and so what happens is they stopped the total prepayment invoices basically in our company. So two-way PO, what happens without receiving, we can very well pay. Advance can be given against this. So go there. So I have now written all this thing from my I click on OK now. So whatever you have set up as or three, five, everything on the receiving parameters, they are all getting defaulted. Fine. How and all it defaults, you again refer the document, it will not tell you from where it is not defaulting. It's a two-way PO, fine, go there, click on it, and then click on OK. So 2021 is the one, which is a no manual PO, it's not an automatic PO, fine, click on submit now, and then we'll now go to the payables and then process it. Click on it. So it's not done, fine, go there. <coughs> so we'll now wait for the, uh, what happens, the completion of the approvals actually, fine, click on it, come on, go to the manager orders, and then do for 2021, and then have a look at it. 2021 and then you tap and then click on search now. Fine. Once you search for it, it will now show it to you. It's now pending approval. Fine. Wait for the approval to complete and then we'll now create what happens. The invoice now. So it's for 100 quantities. Actually, fine. It's now fully approved now. Fine. You go there, go to the manage invoices now. Fine. Click on done. Or cancel now. So go there and then here I will now go to done and then I will now create an invoice now. Fine. Click on the create invoice. I'm now going to manually create an invoice. Fine. Click on create invoice. And then since it's a two-way PO, without receipt, we can very well make a payment now. Fine. In our company, it is considered as advanced now. Fine. Only for advanced, they'll now make it now. Fine. Or sometimes what happens, there will not be any receipt at all for a service-based purchase service. Fine. So that also what happens, they'll be having a two-way PO message. So click on create now. Fine. I'm now going to create a new invoice now. <clears throat> Referring this. 2021 now. 2021 is a purchase order, isn't it? The purchase order number is what? 2021. 2021 is a purchase order number. I will now refer this purchase order number and then make creation. In EBIS, what happens? We have one thing called what? Uh, match. Match approvals now. If you go there, I will show it to you. So here, when I want to create an invoice now, click on invoice entry invoices. So in this invoice, when you're creating it, actually what happens, if you go on and see this now, fine, you will have in the header level, you'll have a match. Fine. Yeah, purchase order match or the zip match. So if the PO says PO match, you have to only put a PO match, otherwise you cannot match it at all. If the header says the PO says reset match, you have to make it as a reset match and then make a match. Fine. And if you put on the opposite side, you will not be able to match at all. So this complexity has been removed now, fine. So there is no need for you to mention anything on the header level. Whether the PO match or result match, fine. It takes it up automatically here. In intuition, what happens? It takes up automatically here on the trade invoice. So identifying PO is what? 2021. And then we'll not give a tab now. Fine. 2021 is the one. Identifying PO. The business unit, everything will be coming out. Fine. Go there. <coughs> everything is coming fine. The number I'm going to do it now. Fine. Let's say 1001. So it's a manual number I'm doing it. So the total amount is 100 now. And then go there. This is standard PO. Fine. Is a, is a, what happens? Uh, a two way PO. Fine. Two way PO match. And then here, you go to the match invoice list and then give a go now. It automatically matches to the PO. Fine. You need not have to mention anything on the header at all. Fine. Click on this match invoice list and then give a go. It matches automatically to the header and then it goes to the next line. That is the advantage. Fine. Go there. No need to worry at all. Fine. You select it and then what happens? You go there. And then it is not done. Fine. Everything is not shown over here. Click on apply and then the match gets completed automatically. It is against the PO only. You can see ordered is 100. Available is 100. For, available is 100 for matching basically. Fine. Build is zero. Shipped is zero actually. So this is equivalent to an advanced business. 
So availability is hundred. No, fine. Hundred is available for a match basically. And what else am I saying? And what other things? Everything is not showing. In fact, click on apply and then click on okay. By which order? And the match is now getting updated now. So it's not done. Fine. We will save now, and then we can very well validate the invoice. So the distributions are now created in the auto invoice route. What happens? The distribution is automatically created as soon as you do run the send to pay on the now. Fine. The distribution gets automatically created now. Now with the match, I'm doing it now. No, no, no. Do that. And do that. Click on what happens? It will save now. And then what the invoice actions and validate it will now get validated. <clears throat> then afterwards, what happens? They will not do other actions like what happens? The painful and other things. Fine. For which what happens? The banks has to be set up. I don't know what those things now. Fine. Even we have approval. Approval is via what happens? A very complex one. Like what happens? You are having uh, this task configuration, isn't it? Through task configuration only they can do an approval. They don't have an approval like other ours. And our approvals are very easy. Whereas what happens for all other modules, approvals are through task configuration through which what happens we have to write the even else statements and other things. It's a very complex one. And then uh, my uh, my financial guys were really envying us. No, fine. Our AR procurement they have done beautifully. Fine. Where what happens the invoice approvals they really is a very horrible one. That's all they say. And that's it. Fine. Go that is now valid. Now we'll now go for a three-way result match. Now. Fine. We'll now go there. Save and close and then come out of here. One thousand one is now created. Now we'll now go for a three-way result match. And we'll go to the purchase orders. I click on that I now copy the two zero two one into another order. Fine. Click on it. <coughs> click on it. And then and that is why what happened the PO match or zip match you need not have to worry at all. That is the biggest advantage. So whether it's an order match or a zip match, you need not worry. The system takes it up automatically on the space. So whereas in the EBIS, what happens? We have to specify the appropriate match in the header level. Then only you have to click on the match now. Matching will now relieve your accrual. Accrual gets relieved, and then many companies will now allow you not allow you to create any manual invoice at all. So in a company, manual invoice is banned. No manual invoice at all. Because manual invoice is triggering a lot of what happens, uh, uh, bribe basically. Say, for example, your purchase orders for one crore, let us say. This guy makes a manual invoice for 20 lakhs and then get a commission of 0.01% in the supplier action because he wants it urgently. And then without matching it and then you do it, what happens? The accrual is lost. The concept of accrual is lost the moment you create even one invoice manually. So, audit has very clearly told that what happens? No more manual invoice. Everything is matched. Fine. Everything is a match invoice. So go there, 2021, fine, go there, click on it, actions, and then what happens, duplicate now, fine, 2022 is now created, I'm going to make it as a three-way result actually. And go so go down, and then I'm now going to the schedules now. <coughs> schedules. And then select, and then click on edit now. Editing it, and go there, you'll now make it as a three-way result. So order a result, the system automatically picks up for the purchase order now. Result now, fine, go there, you'll now make it as a three-way. In some company, what happens in uh, SRF, what happens is a four-way result matching basically. So four way result matching. So uh, three way, Nana. Uh, three way and invoice match option is it? How is it going to match invoice receipt and PO? It will still match, is it? See here, it is now a result match now. So against the result only, we can create it now. Fine. If it is not received, it will now fail actually. If it is not received, it will now fail. It will not even create. Oh, okay. So so we need to receive it to create an invoice. Basically. Exactly. We have to receive it and then make invoice. Fine. That is for what happens. The relieving of the accrual is concerned. How do you want to relieve the accrual? Accrual can be relieved by two methods now, basically. Fine, you go there. Was the P2P process now? Nana, you can still continue to create the invoice without receipt, but yeah. when that when you create I'm the invoice, going to come to that. I'm going to come to that now. Fine, I'm going to come. Okay. To that. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to come to that point. Fine. <clears throat> I'm going to generate that and then show it to you. So accrual is getting relieved against the receipt section. And that is what it happens with here. What happens in the second stage? If you go there. So once when you make a gate receipt, what happened? The accrual is it now. And then in the invoice on the second, the third stage, when you make it now, fine, the distribution is obtained by the relieval of accrual. Actually. How do you want to relieve it? Either by a PO match or a receipt match. Fine. So if it is a PO match, receipt is not required at all. And so what happens? It will now uh, directly, these two steps are bypassed for a PO match as far as the accounting is concerned. Actually. Accounting is concerned is not coming. And then what happened? The PO itself will be coming against which whatever distribution will be coming. Either. That is what it happens. So I don't know how the accounting takes place for a two-way match actually, fine. but uh, for a for a PO match. But uh, if you talk to financials, they will not tell you clearly. But how the accounting takes place also. Uh, but uh, if it is a result match, it is this room. Now what I am going to do is is a PO result match. I am not going to receive less and then uh, what I must bill more. No, fine. That is what I am going to do. Fine. 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 So it's a three-way result match. I am going to receive less and then bill more. We'll not see what happens. Fine. So the three-way states what you have to. 
uh, the the invoice will be compared against what happens in the two way. It's only compared against the two the three way. What happens? It will be compared against what happens your result also. Then only what happens the uh, the approval will not take place. Okay. So it's not done. No, no. Yeah. No, no, one point here. That invoice match option has nothing to do with the approvals. Uh, yeah, it has got nothing to do with the approvals at all. With the approvals, so approvals. The approval actually, fine. Invoice match option is how do you want to relieve your accrual? By a PO or otherwise a result? Uh, no, I do not think so. Even the Because whenever the invoice is created, whether you match it through your receipt or PO, mm -hmm. the accrual will be released. Because whenever it hits the liability account, the accrual will be released. I'll tell you the EB is not fine. So the PO is saying result match. If you go and then make it as a PO match, it will fail actually. Match will not happen at all. Okay, the way it works is when we say the match action as purchase order, yeah. the AP clerk, he has to search the P based on the PO number. He cannot search using the receipt number. Even if you search it, it will not match. It will not match will fail, you can see. If the PO is saying result match, if you put a PO number, and then if you try to match, the match will fail actually. You just see. I have seen it. I have tested it actually. So whatever PO says, you have to put in the header exactly the way in which you're saying that only you have to match now. Right? Against the result only you have to match. But what happens if the result is less and then you are billing more, that is what the thing is going to happen now. Fine, we'll not see. But against the result only, accrual is getting cleared now. Fine. Here accrual is now getting accrued now. Fine. This 11,000 is what happens. It is a thousand quantities and not money actually. The PO is now 11, 11 rupees. And then accrual is quantity accrual and not amount accrual actually. So how do you want to relieve? You are going to relieve only the quantity and represented by money actually. Quantity represented by money, but thousand quantities out of which two hundred quantities are getting relieved now. Eight hundred quantities are not in bills. That is what the internal system is now. Accrual is quantity accrual and not money accrual, but represented in money terms actually. And you try this, automatic is going to work like this because I had a discussion with one of my financial guys, and then he was telling this concept actually. And it is not a money accrual; it is a quantity accrual. Accrual is a quantity accrual. That much of a quantity is accrued for a payment actually. It gets relieved. Fine. Whether you want to uh, relieve it from a PO based or a result based, fine. This is what is, this is what is fine. Now, now I'm what I'm going to do is I am now going to receive less than what happens. I'm going to do it now. Fine. We'll now see what happens. So in this place, I will now receive less than do it now. Three way result match. Fine. Click on it and then click on that. Click on OK. And then I'm not uh, that uh, what happens expert on this. Now fine. Anyhow, whatever I heard from the financials, I'm not telling you. If my concept is wrong, please correct me. Fine. I will now correct also. And 2022 is a three way result match now. So against which what happens? I will now receive 20 quantities. So let me go on the receive 20 quantities. Go to the place and then I will now receive 20. Click on it. Go to 20. So go there. Click on that. What is called? You go to the what's called inventory. It's fine. You go to the supply chain management and then go to the inventory and then receive only 20 quantities against 2022. Click on it. Go there. So click on create. Uh, sorry. You go there. <coughs> And then go to the results <clears throat> and then click on receive expected shipments on 2022. 2022, and then click on search. Select it and then here, what happens? Click on receive. And then I will now receive only 20 quantities. If you give a show receipt quantity, I'll now show you the entire 100 now. And I'll now make it only 20. So click on create. Sir. And then click on submit. So 2022 is now. Received for 20 quantities actually. Only for 20 quantities, I'm receiving it. Click on submit. Now, let me create an invoice for 50 quantities. Let's see what happens. So, in EBIS, what happens? It will now raise a hold actually. It is called overbilling. So, in EBIS, it's known as a overbilling. And then here, what happens? You know, see what happens. Here, it is not going to stop you at all because the payables clerk is knowing that it is only 20 quantities and then you're doing it now. Fine, click on create invoice. I'm going to go there. 2022 is the one. Find the identity view. 2022, and then give a tab. So it's not showing you. Find that. So I will now give the number as 1002 now, <coughs> and then I will now go for 50 because the tax is not there, so I am now putting 50 over there. So click on match. The moment you give a match, the system automatically matches to the result only and not to the PO basically. Right? I click on the match. I'm not showing how much is available for this. So available is only 20. Available for match is only 20 because there's no receipt match basically. Okay. So you select and then put a quantity 50 now. So the moment you put a 50 quantity and then try to match in uh, what happens in EBIS, it raises a hold actually. Sometimes it may be a system hold, it cannot be relieved, and then otherwise you match it. Here it is not so. It is now going to give only a warning that you are overbilling actually. It will now give a warning. I'm going to give a tab. 
it has to show as 15 or whatever. Now, the here itself, what happens now become a red color now. If you click on the red color, it will now show you what happens. The warning. Completing this match will result in the overbill now. Fine. Overbilling, you are not going. So, a warning message only comes, no hold is applied upon infusion as such. Only a warning message will be coming. So, you are overbilling because you are not eligible only for billing for only 20 and you are overbilling. And then it is against the result match only because the, the distribution is now automatically created against the result match only. If I click on OK, and then approval will go through without any problem at all. Right? There is no hold at all created. If I click on OK now, and, and what happens? They may even give a message over here. Fine. Again, a warning message is come now. Fine. It puts only a warning message because it knows that the payables clerk knows this, he is overbilling it, and then he is doing it. And so, what happens? There's no need to create any, any hold. That is what the concept is. Fine. No hold is created. If I click on OK, and that's it. And then, if you go to the invoice actions and go to validate, it will now get fully validated. Have any problem with it. It's validated and then it's not ready for a payment. So, in EVIS, what happens? The hold is created, and then what happens? You have to release the hold. And then, uh, if uh, 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 the system doesn't allow, if it is uh, creating a system variance hold, then you cannot release at all. Right? You have to receive only extra, then afterwards only you can match it. So, I'm not very sure about how that behaves now. Hold behaves basically. So, if it is the, what happens? The user even or other reason, some other holds can be released. If it is a, creating a system variance hold, what happens? You cannot release it at all. Otherwise, you meet that criteria actually. So, some of my friends in the payables are saying that the process has been what happens is smoothened and optimized actually because payables clerk knows that he is overbilling it. Fine. He knows and then it shows in the system itself it's only 20 is available for billing, but he is, uh, is now billing for 50 actually. And remember, all these things are basically quantity based represented in money actually. Fine. Quantity based. So, 20 quantities are eligible, eligible for billing and then what happens is you know billing for 50 quantities actually. And so, that is the overbill actually. And that's sir, one question. Yeah, tell me. So we matched it to twenty, so that is less than hundred. Can we match more than hundred, which is the PO quantity? No, I don't know. Fine, it's a good question. <laughs> because if you match it again, it will be resulting in an overbill only. But where can we go further? All I don't know. Fine. Again, some financial guys has to say now. Fine. So it's a hundred quantities on a result match actually, on a three-way result. And then uh, if you put one twenty over there, what will happen? I don't know. Now, shall we? Now itself, we will not try this. Now, fine. Go there. Click on it. We will not try this. Now, fine. So, it is now validated. Save and close. Now, fine. We will not create one more thing on 2022. We will not try to overbill it beyond 100. Now, we will see what happens. 2022. And then give it a tab now. And then go there. 1003 is the invoice number. And go there. I will now have what I was. So, 50 we have already built on it. Fine. I will now go for 70 coins. 70. 70 amount is $1. So, I am putting it. And click on match now. And click on match. We must see whether it allows or not. So select it available is now zero now fine go there in this one. Order is under available is now zero. So already built for 50 quantities. I will now go for what happens 50 quantities is now built now. Fine, go there. Click on the number of quantities 70 now. Give us 70 quantities. And then it login go there. It will now allow the overbilling beyond the PO number now. Fine. Must see. So click on OK. It has to throw me fine. Completing the list will be resulting in overbill. Fine. Go there. Click on OK. And then I will now try to validate the invoice. Well now say it's getting validated now. Click on it. Yes, it got coolly validated. Maybe but on it should not get validated. Yeah, it should not get validated, right? It's validated now. See, it's validated. It's validated. So I think what happens in the payables options, the invoice options, there may be a control on the overbilling. Actually, you go through the pay invoice options. There, you may have a control. If you set the control, that what happens beyond certain things, what happens? It cannot be maybe basically honored actually. <clears throat> Okay. Right. No, no. Just, just a point for debate. What if uh, the, the AP clerk purposely or billing or the, the when the supply chain are invoice, if we use the auto invoicing, yes. sorry, auto invoice imaging solution, mm. where is the control in the system? Mm. But to my knowledge, we are using this functionality, Nana. We have a control. We cannot overbill. System puts it on hold. Maybe the control will be on the invoice options. I think probably. Yeah. Those options, if you go there, there may be some controls which are there, and then that will now prevent you from overbilling, basically. Yes, yeah. System system puts it on hold and it sends an invoice, sorry, an email to the buyer. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So there's a control in the system. Otherwise, it is uh, mm, it's yeah. a very difficult. Babu, uh, maybe you know to answer your question. Babu, no. Babu, Babu was Babu. answering, actually. It was Babu, yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So actually, you know, we had the similar sort of issue. So actually, this is Vision instance, right? So again, actually, you know, based upon the client requirement, you can always put your hold rules. Yeah. Okay. And then actually, you know, you can restrict it. 
So custom yeah, gold can be put, and then uh, that will be stopping you from over billing actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah because and because most of our customers nowadays going for invoice imaging solution, right? Automatic invoices creation. Correct. Uh, correct. And on top of that, actually, you know, here the approvals are also straightforward. Uh -huh. So you can always write the rules in such a way that actually, you know, uh, it would restrict uh, uh, before it gets approved. Okay, that's yeah. good. And another is approved, it will not be eligible for validation at all. Fine. But Correct. Correct. So, uh, yeah. Babu was saying about the invoice imaging solution. Fine. Whether if you have any documents, uh, please send it to me. I will now share it to other, other participants also. Okay, sure. I'll do that. Invoice really beautifully done. Invoice imaging solution sounds very good, but there are a lot of limits. Yes, hell lot of issues. Hell lot of issues. So we have good, good practice that's been advocated by Oracle itself mm -hmm. is to you know follow any electronic option like a EDI gateway or an OSN, uh, some automatic way of trying to create it. Uh, use I supplier portal. So those are the avenues that you should uh, explore instead of going through the invoice imaging. No, there is a wrong perception that whenever the customer is buying this software, this invoice imaging web center software, uh, thinking with, they can eliminate the AP clerks, they can remove some jobs, but it is not the case. It will help reducing the AP clerks job, but not completely eliminating. That is a wrong perception. You have a control also then. Yeah. In the over billing, you will be having a control also. Okay, that's good. Fantastic, man. If anybody can conduct a training on uh, what happens, uh, financials, it would be great, actually. <laughs> that will be fine. So, any other questions from any other participants? We are not completed the receiving, actually. Where is the invoice status? Invoice status it is now validated. No? Fine status is now validated, actually. Yeah, status will be okay. when, when does the tax get calculated on this? Uh, tax, I don't know. Fine. I don't know the tax are not fine. Uh, how to calculate? The moment the tax gets calculated, the moment. Uh, uh, you try to go to a distribution line uh -huh. or if you don't even go to the institution line and you just enter the header details and the system populates it at the time of validate it creates it basically it's an event generation and the event goes to the tax and tax will figure out whether EB tax I mean Oracle's tax is in place or any other third-party taxes in place. So Srini and Babu are uh, basically working on financials also and so whatever if you have any doubts you can uh, address uh, your queries to them. So they have already shared the email ladies. So you can even have, whenever you have any issues or you want to have a clarification on the financials, you can talk to them. Right. Thank you, Srin. So we are completed the receiving part. Now let us go there and then go for the next topic called supplier merge actually. And I'm going to begin the supplier merge actually. So click on seven close one. Now allocate okay, two suppliers for this. Now fine, go there. click on it. Uh, 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 the cons two is already there. Fine, cons two, side two is there. Fine. So let me go and then merge it with the, what happens sub, sub one now. Fine. I'm going to merge it. So if you go to this place, go to the procurement, and then here what happens? You go to the purchase orders. Now you'll now find both the suppliers available. Now I am now merging the supplier actually. Fine. I click on it, and then I will now go to the manager orders, create order. Now. Fine. I'm now going to merge it. So here from the procurement view is what B01. And then here, what happens? If you put B01, you will now find two suppliers coming up. Fine. So con sub two is there. Fine. Go there. Uh, uh, on BK, con somebody has also created on the same. Fine. I don't want to lose this supplier actually. Fine. Let me merge the con sub two with the sub one. Fine. The con sub two will now vanish actually. Fine. Con sub two will now vanish. So we'll now go there and see. Fine. So con sub two is going to vanish when I merge it. Fine. You will cancel. Fine. It will not perform the merge. So you go to the place. Fine. Click on one. What happens? You merge it. You go to the what's called procurement and then go to the suppliers. Now fine. Go to the suppliers and then I'm going to perform the merge. Go to the procurement suppliers. And go there and then click on it and then here what happens? I'm going to merge it and click on merge suppliers now. Suppliers merge suppliers. I'm going to merge it. I'll now give a plus now fine. So from supplier, fine. it is a B01 cons to because cons we already completed. What happens? The consumption advice also let me merge it now. Fine. I'm not going to use it anymore. Cons up to and then with what with the supplier what B01 B01 and then what happens? Sub one. So once when you perform this merge to supplier site, actually fine. You go there from supplier site and then go there. I will not put the site two over here and then here what happens? I will not put the site. So site two gets merged to site one. So before this, what happens? Let me go and then create uh, a purchase order of this now and now see what happens now. I will not duplicate it and then let me make a purchase order of this one. On sub two sub one. You go to the procurement and then here I will not make a purchase order of this. Con sub two. I will not make it now. Click on create order now. So click on create order. 
<clears throat> so drop it down and then put this one and then go there. It's a B01 cons2. I'm going to make it now. I'm going to make it now. Okay. Go down. And then uh, what happens? I'm not adding any lines actually. Fine. Just to show you that what happens uh, the supplier gets changed on 2023. Fine. Give a save now. Don't save. Then click on submit. So 2023 will be approved now. Fine. Click on submit without any line. I'm approving it now. Oh, the document must have at least one line. So it's not allowing you to a line now. <laughs> Whereas in sales, it is not so. At the header level itself, what happens? You can book it actually. Fine. Then afterwards, Fine. That's the concept now. In the sales order, even if you book within any lines, it will not get booked now. Fine. Here, it's not without a line, it is not allowing you. Fine. Click on plus now. Go to the lines. And then click on plus now. And then click on add a line. Okay. So item is B01, 10, and then you tab now. Go the hundred quantities I'm waiting now. And then go to the schedules. And then here in this place, what I'm going to go there. Click on it. And then put the date, place date now. And then click on it. And then I click on save and then submit. 2023 is now submitted on sub cons to sub one now. And click on submit. 2023 is now submitted for this now. Click on it. So wait for this to get approved now. And then go to the manager orders 2023. <coughs> 2023 and we're So it's not pending approval. I think on it now. 2023 has to get approved now. Now, now when I merge it, what happens? I'm not going to say what happens. What are the things you want to transfer actually? You cannot say transfer purchase orders only or invoice only. There are multiple options are there which you can choose now while merging it. So it's all about how they have merged in the field and then we are now initiating the same merge in the system also. So purchase orders on all. Well, we don't have this in Arpel, right? Supply yeah, we have it. We have it. The same same thing is there. Okay. Same functionality is there in Arpel also. Same. Now what happens? You go there and then you can require it now. Click on it now. And then click on search. So two zero two three is now open now. Right? It is on con sub two. Right? The moment I merge it, the supplier and site will be changed actually. I will now do the merge now. Right? Click on submit now. I'm going to merge it. So click on S now. The merger is now. Under process now, and go to the monitor process and then have a look at it now. It's not getting merged. So the moment you merge it, if I go and then requery the 2023, you can now see the supplier and site will be getting changed actually. Now 20 that concept two will no more exist at all. It will now go away. And then remember, this is an irreversible process. In EBS, what happens? It will now give you a warning also that it is irreversible. Whereas here, what happens? No warning comes in now. So Basically, it will replace, right? From supplier one to supplier two. One sub two will be going away. That's all. It's gone. Go went and gone. And then what happens? Only con, sub one will be remaining there. Merge is completed. Now, go there. Now we go there and then requery on this. Now, go to the place. Two zero one three. So con sub two was there. It doesn't requery. Now, go there. Click on it. Requery. So when they requery, what happens? The supplier is going to be changed. There's no sub. So this and if supplier one, yeah. If there is any BPA or CPA available for a supplier, that will also be changed. Yeah, yeah. We have given all purchase orders. Now, fine. All purchase orders means what? When the merge option is there, we will have given all purchase orders actually. So, you given all, all purchase orders means all the BPA, CPA, everything will go over there. Actually. All of them will be going. Only unpaid invoices. Uh, there are multiple options that you can try those options. But purchase orders means BPA, CPA, everything will go along with it. So, if you go there and try to make a, what happens, a purchase order, what happens on? That uh, concept will no more be available at all. Click on that now. And then go there. Can we and go here. companies merge uh, better? Yeah, I'm going to come. To, there's the next topic. Fine. Now, there's another topic. Fine. What she's asking about. Fine. That is good. We are going to see this now. If you go there, B01. <laughs> now, concept is no more available at all in this place. To place it. So, sir, the both supplier need to be in the uh, same BU or uh, across the BU, it can also. I don't know. <clears throat> Because sites are only BU specific, whereas suppliers are global actually. I don't know whether it will now merge across the BU or not. You only have to try it. Merging across the BUs, is it possible or not? I don't know. No, no, it's R12 it is working. In, huh? in, in R12, this merging across the United PUs to work actually. Is it so? It's working. Who is this? Yeah. And, and Anubhav. Anubhav is saying that what happens across uh, OU, right? there it's called OU. So he says that you can even merge suppliers across OU. That's what he's saying. Yeah. And uh, so there, while, there must be it will also be possible here also. If it is working there, yeah. it must be possible here also. Yeah. 
and while merging system used to suggest like no which organization which OU you, you want to merge with which OU oh. like no that matching is also there oh, oh, oh. side to side matching is there side to side ah. okay fine that means the same functionality might have been retained here also right? 100% so, top top here. so talk to Anubo or write to Anubo fine and then he will also help you out on those things Anubo is also having a good experience and consignment also he has done it actually practically right Anubo, you can also put your mail ID in the chat, basically, whatever, so that people can even talk to you, fine. He's got a rich experience sure. on those things. Sure, no. The next topic is what? Copy merge. So, no, no, what uh, yeah. One question here. So, it's for the one which is getting created. Mm. How about the one which is already been created? I mean, the PO is created, then invoiced, yeah. and payment is made. So you have this option, no? fine. If you want to have this, if you say only purchase orders, Purchase orders only be merged. Invoice will be, you will have to invoice that guy only. So while selling, what happens? A is selling to B. He says that what happens when I'm selling it, I have this much of assets. Fine. And if you say, if you see this one, whatever is spending from this customer also is an asset for you. So he will now uh, charge him for that also. Let us say 500,000 is now charging for merging. And then another 10,000 is coming. So it will now say 5,000, is my price when he's selling to the other company. So you put the invoice. But if you say purchase orders, what happens? The invoice will be paid only to the original customer, only, original supplier. Only. The invoices will not be transferred actually. So only unpaid invoices also we can very well do it. Fine, that that can be merged actually. Fine, there are multiple options of merging. Fine, you make an R and D about how these merges are working actually. In eBiz, we don't have this many options actually. Fine, one or two options are available here, but not this many options. Fine. In uh, yeah, correct. You are right. In in R twelve, we don't have that much of options. And see that Nana. The yeah. supplier to site and from site is there in, in this screen also. Yeah, yeah. The same thing is there. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. This many options are not available in eBiz basically. Fine. They have now given more options for you. Fine. Yeah, so, this, uh, I'm, I'm saying this from supplier side and to supplier side. This across view functionality is also here. Ah, here is there. Here is there. Where is that actually? This second second column and fourth column. Okay, fine. If you put the supplier from the site, you can put it on yeah. another supplier site. What happens if you say yeah. it be, can be across view? You are saying, no? Fine. Go Correct. Ahead. Yes, no, no. Now, copy merge. Next is copy merge. Fine. Uh, no, 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 sir. One question. From supplier site, means we have each supplier has uh, n number of sites. We have to go site by site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to specify to which site it is getting merged, actually. Fine. Even though it is not a, what happens, it is not a mandatory field now. Fine. If you go there, B01, I don't have much of a supplier to show you, you now. Sub1. I will not VK supplier. I'm going to go there. Fine. This is a mandatory field, actually. See, the supplier. Yeah, from supplier is mandatory. From supplier site is mandatory, actually. Fine. If you go to site, and then the two supplier, I'm going to put it now. Fine. Let's say B01. Mm. B01. And then sub one. Yeah, this is not mandatory, actually. Fine. I don't know why it's not. Uh, okay. Fine. This is not mandatory, only in a copy set. Fine. Let us now go for the copy set, actually. Fine. Go there. So, on a VK supplier, what happens? I'm going to create another site. I'm going to see the copy set, how it's going to work. Sure. Copy merge. Next topic is copy merge. Fine. Go to the manage suppliers and then let me create one more site on the B, B, BK now. So I will now go there. I will now put B01. I'm going to create now. Thank you. I'm searching. I'm putting it now. So once I create what I'm getting the BK. So BK is now coming. Fine. Go there. Click on it. And then let me edit the BK now. Go there. I will now go to the sites and then let me create a site. And click on plus now. Fine. Let me create a site. So go there. Address name. I need to have address also. No fine. One address is not possible. No fine. I have to create address also. I'm not going to cancel. No fine. Let me create one more address. You go to the address and then we'll create address. No fine. Plus no fine. <coughs> I will now say B01 address 5. Fine. Fifth address I'm going to do. No fine. Go there. I will now click on it. Address 5. I will now put the city. Fine. Go there. I will now put the country actually. Fine. It's the United States. Do that as now. And then now done. Fine with that. I will now put the postal code as what one zero zero two zero and then give it admin. So the address is now getting created now. So click on save and close. So address five is now ready for this now fine with the ordering and then a rabbit code. And then click on save and close now. I will now create a site as oh, but I have now given what I made a mistake actually. Fine with the click on it and order and rabbit to both things was done. Rabbit to another click on rabbit to and then save and close now. Now let us now create a fifth site actually. Click on the sites now. So we are going to see the copy merge functionality. Fine, go there. Click on plus now. Fine, I'm going to go to the new site. So 
procurement we use now and do the drop it down and then the address file actually and the site is what i will not say site file site file and you will save now sir we cannot go with all the sites at a time it's like i i don't know fine whether we can do it all the sites at a time or not <laughs> if we if we a supplier and then because site is a mandatory field there now fine only one one by one only we can go i think we cannot go for all the sites at a time anyway. so we can say control the fifth site is not made now and we can put the site but click on and then not fine not having a contact doesn't matter if i go there click on the merge now fine go to the merge now and then click on submit now so the fifth site is now created go there and now you go there click on done now now we will not perform a merge now and go there click on it and then we'll merge it click on it and then we merge you click on the merge suppliers we got to merge it now so here and now say plus now so from supplier b01 to vk supplier and we'll take it now vk supplier and take it now or not con supplier it can only vk supplier actually and we'll come home and then uh, b01 i will not choose that normal supplier i have done it on the standard supplier isn't it fine or con supplier i don't know which one i have done yet i'll not choose this one no see site phase we did a con supplier no no oh we did it in a con supplier okay fine yeah. so i did a con supplier so we we'll now go b01 and then the con supplier and the site file will be coming from and click on the site file now the moment you enable it what happens the site cannot be given right the copy site even we need one another so go there i will not put on the b01 so now what happens the ownership changes actually the ownership changes site file what happens is no more linked to this con supplier but there's no link to sub con actually this is what's called copy merge so he is selling only a particular site so in the majestic area what happens you have two uh, what happens uh, two suppliers one is what <coughs> sarana bond and then one is the vasanta bond so there they feel that what happens uh, the sales is not good if you are having two shops and so the particular shop in the majestic is only sold so in this case what happens uh, the ownership is changing the site remains as such the site will be remaining on a copy merge so, so the moment you submit it the the site remains as such now fine the click on submit now So now a site file comes to B zero one sub one. B zero one yeah B zero one sub one actually in the row one does fine. So the action is now it's not showing the action is irreversible. Fine. So whereas a previous also it must have shown I'm not sure about it. Fine. So it is a irreversible action. It is what the message is saying. You cannot re re reverse it at all. Thank you. That's all. <coughs> When you eat the ladoo, you cannot take it back as a ladoo. Kaliya to kaliya. That's it. Go there. Go to space. And then you go there. And then see this one. <coughs> and then uh, i will now go to the manager of this and then go to the zoning and i'll click on that so i'll now go to the monitor classes and how to get it now so monitor classes where is it yaar is not showing in the result at all monitor classes is not showing there at all that's at last last oh god here it has gone to the last <laughs> it has gone to the last actually i'm going to click on it now. so my mess up is now succeeded i think i is not good If you go there and then try to do it, now fine. Go there, click on cancel, now fine. It does not create a purchase order, now fine. Go there, click on it. So on the B zero one itself, what happens? You'll be getting a new one. Click on it. And where is the manager order? Now go there, click on them. And then here, if you go there, site five will be available against what happens? Sub one itself. So procurement B, you input it in. And then click on it. Supplier is B zero one. And then you can now see sub one. If I'm putting it there, you'll now get two sites. Fine. Drop it down. You can now get search site five also has to be available. Sideways. Oh God, it is not coming. Come on. Sideways has to come over here now. Fine. Only copy merge. I have copied it only sub four. Nana. No, no. uh, sorry, sorry. You are. So only I put it now. Fine. Why sideways is not coming? It has to come now. Fine. Maybe log out and log in or what? I will not log out and log in. I will see now. Nana, any concurrent will run? Concurrent is running now. Fine. It is already is already run now. Fine. The merge supplier concurrent is already done. Can you check in suppliers window? There is. Yeah, suppliers window. Fine. Oh, Let us know. Uh, I will not do one thing. I will not first of all log out and log in and then see now. Fine. Sometimes log out and log in will not give you the answer now. Uh, in Nana, this merge merge supplier, uh, this concurrent also used to show uh, the output. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the log yeah. output also will be showing there actually. It, it shows very clearly like you know what you have done. Ah. Uh -huh. So they reload now. So I will now uh, go to the procurement and I will now make a purchase order directly and see whether the output is coming directly on here. So click on create order now. 
B01 and B01 sub 1. That may we are now merged a consigned supplier actually. Fine, I don't know whether that is not possible or not. But consigned to a normal one and came now. Here it is not coming. You know, see the output of this. No, fine. Sana, you merged site 5, you know, site 5 you merged and uh, default the other one, two supplier has only site 1. So it got merged to site 1 or has merged to sub 1 actually. Fine. And then uh, why it's not showing there? Uh, the output. But we have not given anything to. Huh? Two side, we not the two side is not required at all because what happens it will now get merged with the supplier only okay. as a separate side actually. The two side is basically absent actually. You see, the two side is grayed out actually when we are going copy. Yeah, copy. but grayed out then which uh, by default it will take the existing site of the two supplier or it no, no, it's a, a new supplier on the sub one now. It is a new supplier on the sub one now. So that is how it works actually. It is not going to merge with any other any other sites actually. It will be going as a new site of the sub one actually. Oh, it will create a site five only. Same. Ah, site five only. Yeah, exactly. It will not create a site five only. You know, see what are the oh, so much of a things are there. Yeah. Who can sit and then read this? No. <laughs> oh, can you sir do control F and then search for site five? Uh -huh. Just do control F and see site five. Site maybe we can find something. Or search control F success. One second, one second. Is that any message is now readable, understandable? You have to see here it says site 5 somewhere. Okay, it's now saying no? site yeah. uh, B1 sub 1, two supplier, right? Is a, is a sub from site is site 5 and then two suppliers, so and so uh, to supplier. Fine, go there. So copy site flag is yes, actually. There are the parameters that have been passed, actually. Transfer options is what purchase orders, everything is there. Submitted for the merge now, and then afterwards, what it says now. Uh, checking if uh, two supplier has at least one address already, it is now there. Fine, that is a, that is a minimum requirement. Merge in, merge in different suppliers. Check if address supplier fine goes there. No showing or something. Calling, calling, calling. No, it's very difficult to understand here. <laughs> address. What is this? Anna? If same address exists, then the null com the same address, address exists, it will not allow, I think, probably. With the same address, but it's saying that there are all the things it is not showing now. So set to false since supplier already has at least one active size now. address. Create address and contact set and entering it parameters. Entering create address now. Fine. Go there. Calling, calling. And get the attention. Right? Number of number of contacts to the supplier to sub supplier is three. Now five. Maybe I not put a contact whether the contact is giving a problem or not. Contact is null actually. I don't give any contact with the other supplier actually. Merge in different suppliers after getting address and validation. Transaction transaction is clean actually. Ah. Uh, what is this? So much of information is now coming. <laughs> I am unable to understand this now. Looks contact is the issue, Nana. No, no. Maybe maybe we can no, try. It looks like a contact is the issue, no? Fine. It looks so. Mm. It's not coming in Japanese also. Merge. Oh God. At least it has told clear enough. Right? Fine. Merge report PDF generation is success. Report is success. I mean, there is not a thing that the process is success actually. Ah, I mean, somebody uh, make an R&D on this. Not fine. I don't know why it has failed or why it is not. What if we go to the supplier site. workbench and see whether the supplier so it is uh, inactivated the site so and so. It's not inactivated. Creating a new site before inserting a new record. Creating a new record. And then from site is inactivated. From site is inactivated. Is okay. And from site is inactivated. Uh, due to site merge, and then that is a site five may be inactivated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, site of five. The supply. first one is inactivated actually. Yeah. Uh, and then the destination, whether it is activated or not, fine. Ah, so much of information is there. <laughs> I don't know how to read it actually. <laughs> you know, the logic is copy and merge, or just copy. If, if it is a copy, what happens? It has to be getting. Uh, it has to be merged with another site actually. If it is a copy merge, if a copy is selected, automatically it will be going as a separate site actually. Okay. Because I was thinking like if it copied and then merged already and came into one single site. There are two types of copy merge. One is a simple merge, one is a copy merge. So we did a copy merge actually now. Ah, I cannot understand this. We can check, Anna, we can, can we check in a supplier, uh, two supplier, whether any new site is created. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Go on and check on the supplier itself and click on it now. Close it. Make a check on the supplier itself. 
which one is not available. So here, Elmon, go to this one, Elmon, check on the supplier itself whether any site is not shown there or not. And we'll click on it. I will now go to the procurement and then go to the suppliers and then check the B01 now. Fine, we'll now see whether it is visible there or not. So clear, and then we go there, go to the managed suppliers. The transaction is not visible, but at least here it is not showing as a visible or not. You know, so fine, click on search now. I will now open up the sub one now, fine, click on it and then edit it now. And then go to the sites and then have a look at it now. Go to sites, it has to show two sites now. Yeah, site has come now. But it is not eligible for a, what happens, site has come over here. But I'm warning, not, check on the warning. Yeah. The, the, the contact is not there actually. Site has no active contacts. But if a contact is not there, it is not allowing me to make a payment or what? You know, see, open the site and see, right? Contact is not a mandatory one actually. The no, it's not mandatory. It's just for the sourcing and other communications like. But I am unable to pay, place the site on the purchase order actually. Purchase order is not ban actually banned actually. I don't know why it's so. Maybe it may coming. I think uh, it may take would have taken some time actually. Maybe you know go there and then try to make a purchase order on this one. Must have taken some time actually. And the supply the site has come now again. You go to the procurement and then have a look at the purchase orders now. In, in fusion, I think contacts is mandatory. Oh, oh, oh. maybe yeah, purchase orders. Maybe I'm not sure about it. I mean, click on trade order now. No, no, see whether it comes or not. B01 <coughs> sub one. Drop it down and make a search now. Maybe. I think the contact may be mandatory. Yeah, Nana, you create a contact there for the same site and let us come back on that as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Nana, please don't give the email ID. Give just first name, last name, and contact will be created. Let's see what mm. happens. Okay, I'm going to click on it. Ah. Click on the procurement. And then we'll go to the supplier now. <clears throat> go there. So, Manage suppliers B01. No, no, it is good. Like, no, we, we face this kind of issue while while do performing. <laughs> because this is the real time, like, no, things. We, we, we must know, like, no, the crunch of that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, I really love, like, no, when we get this kind of errors. Okay. Check on select. First of all, let me get a contact and then do it. Now, I'm click on contact. So, click on the contact, let me create it and then associate it. Click on plus now. <clears throat> and then the first record, record. the first record, I guess. Yeah. No, no. no, I am not creating a contact actually. And the contact for the first site, I guess. You which site is that? Uh, okay. Contact. Towards you are going to associate it actually. So I am not creating only a contact actually. And, the, and then I am not doing it. Fine. With click on actions and then whatever select and add and then I will not add it to the site actually. And the, so I will not put another site file. If I click on apply, then click on okay. Fine. The fifth contact is now getting added now. So click on save and close now. Fine. So the contact is now added to the fifth site actually. And click on save and close now. And no done. And then here, how do we go there? And then you know done. And go to the sites and then have a look at it whether the yellow mark has now gone. Fine, though that is not yet gone. I'll now submit it and then see it now. Fine, click on submit. No done. So click on the now. In the meantime, what happens? It's now submitted. I'll now go there and then click on create order. So you now see whether it is visible or not. Click on it, drop it down. Go there. And then put the supply D01. I have to wait for some time or not. I don't know. The concurrent has to com get complete enough and drop it down. Click on search. So click on search. It's not coming. Maybe I think uh, the concurrent has to get completed actually. And then go to place. And uh, click on manage suppliers again. <clears throat> B01. Click on search. Go there. Mm, go to the sites now. No, it's not having any error actually. If I know yellow mark is there. Yeah, Nana, you log out and log in actually. Maybe um, I'm going to cancel now. I'm going to log out and log in now. The changes happen. Okay. Click on confirm now. So click on sign in now. Click on click on them. You go to the purchase orders now. <clears throat> Go to the create order. B01. Come on, die. Click on search now. 
Oh God. Uh, Nana, go back to contacts and give the email ID and then submit and then do, it should appear. Yeah, fine. No, oh, save to location. Remove save to location. There is a save to location in uh, while period. My wife is calling for a breakfast actually. Fine. So I will now go for a breakfast and then come back and then we'll now do our Indian this one. Fine. Okay. That's okay. Fine. So I'll now stop it and then uh, it is now 5.50 in India and then at 6.20 p.m. India will again begin now. 6.20 p.m. And then uh, it is 8.50 a.m. in Eastern. Fine. Eastern is 8.50 a.m. Fine. 8.50 a.m. We're going to begin at Eastern. Actually. I'm going to stop it.